Last year, we've got over $8,000 in tax refunds just as a result of contributing to our RSPs transferred into our accounts. No trick, no joke, and completely legal. This video is for RSP beginners. Those of you who have heard about this awesome thing called the RSP that seems to be so important to save money but are just not quite clear about. And just in case you already know all about this, just treat this video as a little nudge to make maximum use of your RSP. In this video today, I will explain everything you need to know so you too can get a fat tax refund. And it's not too late yet as this year's RSP deadline is February 29th, so still plenty of time to make things happen. This is probably the biggest cash bag that you'll ever get. But very important to know, there are some instances in which you may not want to contribute too much or at all to your RSP, which I'll explain to you later in the video. So stick with me all the way till the end. Before we start guys, just a very quick disclaimer here, I'm not a financial planner or advisor, I'm just sharing my experiences here. Just treat this video as a primer to learn the very basics and from here you can go on and do some more detailed research. So let's start. To answer the question of how you can potentially get thousands of dollars back in tax refunds, the summary is this. Money that you put into your RSP is not taxed, up to a certain amount. And here's a rough illustration, don't mind the exact proportions, this is just to give you a rough feel of what contributing to your RSP can do for you. Imagine this here is your income and without contributing to your RSP, about this much would be taxed. Now, if you take this portion and put it into an RSP, then only this remainder would be taxed, which is much, much less. This is the amount of money that you can save. How much money you can get refunded exactly does not only depend on the amount you contribute to your RSP, but also on the tax rate that applies to you specifically. As explained in this article here, contributions can be deducted from your taxable income when filing your tax return, meaning you can end up paying less taxes and save more money. You may get anywhere from 20% to 50% of your RSP contributions back as an income tax refund based on your marginal tax rate. Don't worry, I will break all of this down and I will try my best to do this chronologically. We'll talk about what you need to do step by step to get an RSP refund, contribution rules that you will need to know about, when you will actually get your refund, when you'll get the money in your account, and also some very important things to consider before you start contributing to your RSP because for all its benefits, the RSP is not always suitable for everyone. So let's start with question number one. I also want to get a tax refund. What do I need to do? First of all, you need to open an RSP account. RSP stands for Registered Retirement Savings Plan. And it's one of many other plans registered with the government that you can open. And once you put money into your RSP account, normally you would invest that money into investment products. I personally prefer to have self-directed RSP accounts. A self-directed RSP is one where you control the assets of your RSP and make the investment decisions yourself. Unlike, for example, group RSPs offered by your employers where an investment manager would administer the funds. So with a self-directed RSP, you decide exactly which ETFs, which stocks, which bonds you want to buy, how much, and also when. And nowadays, guys, it's super easy to open an RSP account with most financial institutions, and you can do this completely online. Note financial institutions, which means that it does not necessarily have to be a bank. The downside with most banks is that most will charge you account maintenance fees, and some even charge you setup fees just for opening an RSP. SP. The point is that you want to save money and not spend more. So why would you pay any fees if you can open an RSP account for free? And one financial institution that lets you open an RSP account for free is Mumu. Mumu, an online trading platform, is used by over 21 million people globally. In Canada, Mumu Financial Canada is a member of CERO and the CIPF or the Canadian Investor Protection Fund. So rest assured that your money is safe. You can open your self-directed RSP as well as TFSA accounts with Mumu. Mumu charges $0 annual fees for your account. So there will be no account opening or statement fees eating into your gains. You can start with any amount as there is no account minimum. And here's what's awesome. Contribute as little as just $100 and receive $50 in cash rewards. And if you contribute more, you can unlock even greater rewards of up to $750. Even better, if you transfer in $100,000, you can get $1,550 in cash rewards. Opening your RSP account is simple. Use my link and complete your registration using your phone number or email address and fill in your details. Choose account type, here RSP, 
submit, and within one to three business days, your account should be approved. Once you contribute money to your RSP, you can start investing. Mumu is a great choice for self-directed investing. While many other brokerages charge $5 or more per order, Mumu charges $1.99 US dollars per trade for US stocks and ETFs. You'll also get a ton of free features through Mumu's app, including level 2 market data for the US and Canada, paper trading feature, access to over 200 free courses, and enjoy 16 hours extended trading hours. Note that if you sign up, I will be eligible for a small commission. So thank you Mumu for sponsoring a portion of this video. Now back to the video. Okay, so now you've opened an RSP account. Your next question may be, how much can I contribute and when? Let's first talk about how much you can contribute, not how much you should which is called the contribution limit or contribution room. Just imagine a room of a certain size and that is the limit to which you can stash money inside and not more. You can't just contribute $200,000 even if you had the money. So how much is that contribution room exactly? Each year that you work and report your income to the CRA, you automatically build a new RSP contribution room. The amount of new contribution room you get each year is equal to 18% of your earned income, meaning money that you you work for, not investment income or government benefits you receive, up to a cap called the allowable limit that changes annually. And also very important, there are penalties if your contributions exceed your allowable RSB contribution limit. So yes, there is a cap and the cap for the year that has just passed, 2023, is $30,780. It increases each year, not just inflation, luckily. And for the year 2024, the limit will be $31,560. But for this year's tax reporting, tax reporting 2024, the contribution limit of 2023, which is $30,780, will apply. So let's just say, for example, that in 2023, you earned $60,000. In that case, your contribution room is 18% of $60,000, which equals $10,800. And because $10,800 is below the cap for that year, the $30,780, that will be your maximum, the $10,800. So it's the lesser of both amounts. But let's just say, to give you another example, that in 2023, you earned $175,000. Like in this example here, let's say Grace earned an income of $175,000 in 2023 and has no pension. She also has $5,000 in RSB contribution room carried forward. So $175,000 in earnings times 18% equals $31,500, which is over the 2023 RSB contribution limit of $30,700. $80. But in this example here, it says that she also has $5,000 in RSB contribution room carried forward. So we add the $5,000 to the $30,780. This is just a typo here with the extra zero equals $35,780. And this is the great thing, guys, that you can actually carry forward your contribution room. If, for example, you have unused RSB contribution room from the last year in the amount of $5,000, that will be added on to your contribution room in the next year. But how much of your contribution room can you actually carry forward? Any RSB contribution room you have left is automatically carried forward, which means you don't have to max out your RSB contributions each year. In other words, these amounts continue to roll over into future years. You don't lose contribution room just because you don't max out your RSB contributions in any given year. So this is unlike, for example, the FHSA, where there is a limit to which you can carry forward your contribution room. So just in case you've never had an RSB account yet, or you've never contributed to one, you'll probably be surprised to see what your limit is. And instead of just calculating it and guessing it yourself, you can find your exact contribution room in your CRA account or your notice of assessment. It may be a lot. So remember, very important, do not exceed your contribution room because you will need to pay a penalty. Now let's get to part B of this question, which is when can you contribute to your RSP? For 2024 this year, February 29th, 2024 is the RSP contribution deadline for the 2023 tax year. So you have until 11.59 p.m. on February 29th to make a contribution to your RSP for possible deductibility on your 2023 tax return. 
So as per launch of this video, you still have a couple of weeks to make contributions to your RSP and maximize your tax refunds. Now let's get to question number three, something I bet that you really want to know, which is what happens after I contribute to my RSP? When you file your personal income taxes and the deadline for that is April 30th, by the way, you will need to input your RSP contributions. So remember, the tax filing deadline is April 30th, while the RSP contribution deadline for this year is February 29th. So let's just do this quick example using TurboTax calculator. So let's say that you live in the province of Ontario and your employment income is $75,000. And let's calculate the estimated taxes, which is $13,966. Remember, this is just an estimation. This is not the exact number because how much you will need to pay in taxes will depend on a lot of other factors. So now let's say that you contribute $10,000 to your RSP and you fully claim the deduction for that tax year, you'll pay approximately $10,851 in taxes, which is $3,115 less. That's a lot of money. That's about 30% of the $10,000 that you've contributed to your RSP. So you can see now how this is practically free money. In case you're still wondering what percentage of the RSP amount that you contributed, you'll get back as a tax refund. The answer is that it all depends on your tax bracket and which tax rates apply to you. And by the way, I will make another video pretty soon on how personal income taxes here in Canada work. So if you don't want to miss out on that video, in case you're not subscribed yet, please do subscribe. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit the notification button so that YouTube will inform you once that video goes live. Now, another interesting question is when do I actually get my tax refund in my account? According to the CRA, their aim is to get your refund to you within two weeks when you file online and within eight weeks when you file a paper return. So far, we filed online and every time it went super fast. I don't remember if it's two weeks exactly, it might be three weeks, but it was pretty fast. And yes, you get that money in cash into your designated account along with any other tax refunds you may get. And then you can do whatever you want with the money. You can even put it back into your RSP account or TFSA account for the next tax year. And so the cycle goes on and on and you can save so much money just by doing this. You'd be leaving so much money on the table by not doing this unless you have very good reasons not to. And another question that you might have, especially if you're a newcomer, is this all sounds great and amazing, but is this legal? Yes, yes, yes. In the beginning, I couldn't believe it myself. It's so simple and it takes almost no effort. Well, except you need to save the money to put into your RSP. And in case you feel like you still can't save any money here in Canada, then you might want to watch this video up here. Now, for all its benefits, I have to address some objections, some reasonable objections towards contributing to an RSP. When should you consider not contributing at all or contributing less to your RSP. There are actually several cases where you may not want to contribute to an RSP where you would be better off not contributing. And this is laid out very well in this article here. Let's just look at a few things. One thing you may want to consider is your income level. If your income is quite low, then it may not make sense to contribute. The higher your marginal tax bracket, the higher your current tax savings are, and the more attractive RSP contributions are. If you are in a higher marginal income tax bracket, then the income tax savings can be significant. Let's just input a simple example, and again, we'll use TurboTax. Let's say your income is $50,000, and you live in Ontario. If you don't make RSP contributions, you will pay approximately $6,842 in taxes. Let's say now same scenario but you contribute $5,000. The taxes that you will need to pay are approximately $5,427. A savings of $1,415 which is still not bad but not as much as you would have saved if you're in a much much higher tax bracket of for example a $300,000 income earner. As your marginal tax rate is still relatively low, the tax amount that you save is not as much. Vice versa, the higher your income, the more you should contribute to your RSP. In general, the higher your tax bracket is, the more money each dollar contributed to your RSPs can save you. So if your income is lower than $50,000, then you may consider whether or how much you want to contribute to an RSP or make your contributions and deductions later when you fall into a higher tax bracket. 
so that you can save more taxes. And instead, you can put some or even all of that money into a TFSA instead where your money can grow tax free. Here's another thing to consider. Do you expect to have future large income tax years? In cases where clients have moderate levels of income today, but expect an increase in the future, building up and saving the contribution room or building an unused component to offset the larger income tax years is a strategy worth considering. Now, here's another thing that you can do. If your income is lower than $50,000 and you think that you're not going to benefit as much from RSP deductions, what you can do is contribute to your RSP, but not necessarily deduct the amounts this year. Instead, you can keep it for future years and deduct it in the future by the time your income is higher and save more taxes then. Alternatively, as I just said earlier, you can just put that money into a TFSA. So at least in the meantime, it can grow tax free there. And later on in the future, when you get into a higher tax bracket, you can pull your money out of your TFSA and put that in your RSP since you have accumulated that contribution room. But remember, of course, there's a risk of putting all your money in your TFSA in the meantime, because the value of your investments may go up during that time, but they may also go down in that intended time frame. So I'd say that this is a highly personal decision and to make sure that you make the best decision for yourself, you may want to consult with a financial advisor or a financial planner to see what your options are. Since I don't give out financial advice. Personally, when I just started my business and my income was on the lower side, I still contributed a bit of money to my RSP, but I put the majority of my money into my TFSA. But as my income grows and I shift into a higher tax bracket, I will gradually put more money into my RSP. So guys, I hope this video clarified about how you can get your tax refund just by contributing to your RSP. And yes, you still have time to get it done until February 29th. Still a few weeks left. Enough time to open an RSP account within the next few days, contribute money to it, and then deduct the amount in your tax return by April 30th. And then you could get your tax refund, whether that's 25%, 30%, or whatever of your RSP contribution as early as mid or end of May this year. And just in case you're watching this past the RSP deadline, it still pays to contribute to your RSP because then you will get in your tax refund in 2025. And if you're still looking for a trading platform, then don't forget to check out Moomoo. My link is in the descriptions below. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was useful and I'll see you pretty soon in the next video. Bye.